Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to Native Sugar Shack. I'm Matt, thanks for tuning in. New subscribers, welcome to the channel. Native Nation, welcome back. Uh, I've tried to turn everything down in here, guys. I've still got this, I need to keep this one fan here on low. Stay on these plants, keep them moving. I've got the uh, uh, two exhaust fans turned way, way down. This is about as quiet of an environment I can get in either one of my rooms, okay? So I hope it's good enough. I hope the uh, background fan noise is not overpowering and um, best I can do, okay? I'm gonna be talking about two things in this video. We're gonna talk about uh, the IPM that I'm using on the Skywalker OG Grow that we're following. And then I'm going to give you five tips. Somebody's asked me about um, getting a job at a commercial grow and I'm going to give you um, my top five tips on how to do that. Okay, so let's talk about IPM. Um, full disclosure, Sierra Natural Sciences, SNS, is not paying me. They have not sent me any free product. But as a matter of full disclosure, they did send me a pretty nice hat, a pretty cool t-shirt, some stickers, um, and that's what I've gotten. Uh, I have not received any free stuff, okay? I'm not getting paid. What I did get was more valuable to me than getting paid for making a video or getting free product even. Okay, what I got was some very valuable information from a very nice person, a lady that uh, answered the phone when I called SNS. I had a uh, really good discussion with her about these two products, and uh, I have now fully implemented, implemented the uh, program with these two products, and that's what I'm going to talk about. This is SNS 209. This is this has rosemary in it. Okay, it's got um, it's got some other stuff too, but it's 10.23 percent rosemary. Then it's got some water, some soap bark, some humic acid. Okay, here's how this works. This works as a non-pesticide systemic. It gets into the plant. It builds up in the cell walls. A bug bites it, it doesn't like the taste of the rosemary, and it moves on. If it keeps feeding, it dies. It dries up and dies, okay? So this, you know, I've talked about systemics before when I've talked about pest control. Systemics are, a, are not a good thing, okay? I do not like to use pesticides, especially systemic pesticides. This is all natural. It's just rosemary. Uh, I don't even think it's tested for in compliance testing. Pretty sure it's not. It's just an essential oil, basically. Uh, and it's, you know, builds up in the cell walls. How do I use it? Um, I have already flipped the Skywalker OG to flower. It's in its first dark cycle, dark cycle right now. Lights went out at 10 a.m. this morning. Um, the six waterings six no seven waterings prior to today i've had this in the reservoir at eight milliliters per gallon okay so mixed into the my regular nutrient feeding at eight milliliters per gallon that allows the uh, plant to uptake the rosemary during flower the first day of the first three weeks I'm going to be spraying the uh, Floorflex uh, Bloom Foliar Spray. When I spray that, I will also be spraying SNS 209. Okay, as a again as a systemic to get in to get in through the stomata and enter the plant and continue to build up in the cell walls. After those three sprays, I will not spray the plants anymore at all. Uh, there should be enough. Um, build up in there that I will only include this about every uh, once a week in the reservoir just to keep it replenished and built up in the cell walls. SNS 203. Whereas this I put in the reservoir, 
I do not put SNS 203 in the reservoir. Anything you put SNS 203 in that you want to use for something else, you're going to have to flush SNS 203 out of it first. So don't put this in your reservoir or any of your special sprayers or anything like that. I use a pump sprayer for this and it's about the only thing that I use in that pump sprayer because, well, <laughs> I'm lazy and I don't want to have to flush out the pump sprayer so I just use one, okay? Actually that's not true. I use one for both SNS 203 and my uh, Lost Coast Plant Therapy but I'll get to that. Alright, SNS 203 also has a tiny bit of rosemary in it, a very small percentage, but its primary ingredient is clove oil. Okay, this is the contact killer. This is the systemic, systemic inside the plant. This is the contact killer on the plant. So this is used for foliar spray, top of the pots, uh, in veg, foliar spray, top of the pots, after the third week in flower, no more, uh, well I don't use this foyer in uh, flower because I'm using this and I don't need this. Yeah, so you know this would be top of the pots, bottom of the stems, that type of thing. If I am using this on the, uh, on the leaves and stuff in flower, I, wouldn't, I won't use it after week three, of course. But I don't use it in, uh, in those three sprains at the first day of the week for the first three weeks I'm using this. Okay, so that is the program. That's how you use this stuff. Uh, both can be used for soil drench. Uh, prior, to, um, prior to transplanting the Skywalker OG out of their half gallon grow bags into their two gallon grow bags, I did a root flush with SNS 203. I've explained how I, did, uh, how I do that in a previous video. Uh, I do the flush about an hour before lights come on and then as soon as lights come on I flush this out using regular nutrients okay a regular nutrient feeding and I don't wait two hours after the lights have been on I want this out of there when my lights come on I don't want my plants transpiring this this I want them sucking up not this so I flush this out as soon as the lights come on uh, now why do I continue to use Lost Coast Plant Therapy? This has a different active ingredient. Um, this contains soybean oil and several other things. Soybean oil, peppermint oil, citric acid, um, and then it's got some water, some soap, some isopropyl alcohol, and sodium. The way I use this is one ounce per gallon, and then I add another ounce of isopropyl alcohol, and that's how I use it. And the reason I use both is because I alternate, okay? I alternate. I have learned my lesson a long time ago about using one thing over and over and over you create Borg bugs and resistance is futile, <laughs> okay? So never do that. Don't get one thing and just keep using it over and over and over, okay? You need a couple different things. Three things is even better. A couple different things now and a couple other things later, however you want to do it, do not use the same contact killer over and over and over. Your bugs will become resistant and then resistance is futile. All right, so that's what I'm doing, guys. These are the products that I'm using, SNS 203, really nice people. Uh, you can call them and talk to them, and they will explain to you exactly how to use their products. Um, and these are the, the lady that explained it to me, she uses these products in her grow. She was very knowledgeable, very nice, and I very much appreciated her time. So one thing's for sure. Okay, I'm using this on video. We're going to be, keep, be keeping track of it. Um, it's going to go one of two ways. Either this is going to work or it's not. There's really no in-between. Okay, and at the end of uh, this flower cycle, we're all going to know. And I think it's, uh, it seems to be working pretty good for me so far. I, uh, I used, um, used it in the uh, Gorilla Cookie Grow that we harvested a while, a while back last three weeks ago I think uh, and it worked pretty well for me now that I've uh, spoken to SNS and they've given me the details about exactly how to implement both of these it seems to be working even better
okay hey guys before we get started on the uh, second part of this video there's one thing I forgot to mention about SNS 203 uh, you saw me in the run-up to this video I was making some clones those cuts came from an outside source those aren't my genetics okay I'm, I'm uh, helping another grower uh, anytime I bring cuts into my grow before they ever you know go into a cloning cube and get put into my uh, table over there I'm using SNS 203 the contact killer in a jar just like this and you saw me dip every clone okay swirl it around there dip it do all that I want to make sure those clones are bug free before I put them in my domes and they go in my garden okay second part of the video five tips on getting a job at a commercial grow this question came out of Arizona I think we have um, like 36 states now right that have either medical or medical and recreational grows popping up everywhere a lot of these places offer pretty good jobs they pay decent um, and a lot of people out there are looking for these type jobs so <clears throat> I don't know that um, my tips will apply to Arizona I assume they would um, but I know that they apply here uh, in the uh, beautiful Native American nations of northeastern Oklahoma so why do I qualify to give tips well if you've been following me for very long maybe you uh, remember, recall that um, I have ran pretty large commercial grows in the past uh, the last one that I ran was about a thousand plants 64 lights uh, they were 64 black dogs pulling a thousand fifty watts each from the wall so you know I've done the hiring and the firing the training I've interacted with a lot of people trying to get into the industry uh, so maybe I you know might be a little bit qualified to give five tips okay uh, the first thing I want to talk about before I give you my first tip is I want to talk about attitude okay attitude goes a long way to getting you hired in this industry okay for some reason uh, I got the impression hiring people talking to a lot of people wanting to get in I got the impression that some people seem to believe that in the commercial industry what we do all day is sit around and smoke weed and watch the pretty plants grow that's not the case guys that's not the case at all okay this is farming in every sense of the word this is farming it might be indoors it might be in a semi-clean environment only because you made it semi-clean uh, it might be in a controlled environment uh, you know and all of that under you know artificial lighting and all of that but make no mistake this is farming there is going to be manual labor involved you are going to get dirty you're going to be up to your shoulders and plants you're going to be carrying heavy pots um, this is work in every sense of that word this is work uh, and you're trying to get a job you want to do that work so have that attitude okay don't think that uh, this is something that it's not okay it's work it's not um, smoke weed and watch the pretty plants grow it's bust your ass for eight hours a day minimum okay that's what it's about okay tip number one how should you dress when you go to interview for a commercial road job don't wear a suit <laughs> okay don't wear a suit uh, wear clean clothes like you were ready to go to work in a garden just like this okay uh, pants and a shirt doesn't have to be collared shirt t-shirts fine no holes clean okay clean don't grab your cleanest dirty shirt from the pile all right clean clothes when you go in make sure that you are also clean okay you know what I mean by that is uh, don't go to your interview directly from your garden okay clean up a little bit before you go over there um, it'll go uh, it'll help <laughs> uh, and it, number three or along with that number two go clean 
try not to drown yourself in cologne or perfume. Um, just don't do that, okay? Don't even wear it. When I say go clean, don't, go, don't leave your garden and go straight to the interview. Don't get out of the shower and put all that stinky stuff on and go to the interview. Um, that deserves a little explanation, I know. Why shouldn't you wear cologne or perfume when you go to your uh, grow job interview? Here's why. Myself and a lot of other experienced growers can walk into our flower room and simply from the smell in the room, we can tell if there's something wrong in the pots. From the smell in the room, there's a lot we can tell about the health of the plants. We can tell what's been sprayed, what's been not, not been sprayed. There's a whole lot of information that a very experienced grower can tell just from the smell of the room. If I walk into my flower room and all I can smell is your Chanel number no. five, that's a problem. That's an issue for me. Okay, that really is. So don't do that, okay? Go clean. Number three, understand that a commercial grow is nothing like what you're doing in your tent at home. It's nothing like what you're doing in the closet or wherever you're growing at home, your backyard, doesn't matter. It is nothing like that at all. I highly recommend that if you've never worked in a commercial grow before, that you go in knowing that you don't know anything. And I promise you, if you get hired 90 days later, you're going to look back and you go, what? You're going to, you're going to go, you know what? Matt was right. When I got here, I didn't know anything. Now I know a lot. Okay, so if you've never worked in one before, all you've done is grow at home, that type of thing, I highly recommend that you go in knowing that you don't know very much at all. You know, uh, mouth shut, brain open, learn, 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 learn. Learn as much as you can from, the, from day one. From day one. If you have to ask, ask questions. Ask people to show you stuff. Other people there, whoever, okay? Learn as much as you can. Number four. This is, <laughs> uh, this is bad, bad reflection on me, maybe. Um, at a commercial grow, nobody gives a flying rat's ass what you saw on YouTube. Nobody cares what Native Sugar Shack, what Matt at Native Sugar Shack said about anything. Nobody cares what Vader OG said. Nobody cares what Meg Cropper One said. Nobody cares what Meg Grower said. Nobody cares what the dude grow says. Grow the dude grows said. Mr. Grow it. Whoever you watch, nobody cares. Okay, nobody. At every commercial grow, there is a master grower. And that master grower has some subordinates working for him that he has trained. Those people are going to train you if it's not the master grower himself. And none of those people care anything about what you learned on YouTube. Not even a little bit. Okay, so don't go in there talking about that. All that's going to do is turn people off to you and you don't want to do that, okay? Number five. Number five is a two-part. Number one. In your interview, do not lie about anything. Nothing at all, okay? Uh, if you go in there and you try to BS your way through this interview, and you try to tell them that you worked a commercial grow in Oregon somewhere or whatever, within the first 20 minutes of you going to work, they're gonna know that you were lying. I promise you they will. Okay, so don't do it. They will fire you. Don't do that. Okay? And the second part, once you get hired uh, and you're working at a commercial grow facility, do not steal from the grow. Guys, I've seen it happen too many times. Okay? Every plant in that grow is accounted for. You've seen the tags on all these plants. Every bud, every seed, every everything is accounted for. This is a business. Don't steal from your employer. You will get caught 
you will get fired, you will go to jail. Okay? You're not dealing with, um, you know, th this is this is not Walmart where you know they have pilferage that type of thing um, this is a drug be it medical or recreational it's a drug it's controlled do not steal from your employer <laughs> okay bad news from the word go don't do it and that's going to finish up this video guys I really don't have anything else to discuss so if you haven't subscribed we invite you to subscribe and follow along if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comments below thanks for tuning in we'll see you soon